Hey guys, it's Rain here at Mild Domestic Church. I am finally getting to do a video that was requested a while back. Um, I've actually had this video, um, this video request a few times, but I finally sat down and wrote down all the points I wanted to talk about, and I'm sitting down today to do it. So as you can tell from the title of this video, it's about how I teach my kids how to read. I have six children, I'm a mom of six. Uh, they range from ages 11 down to a newborn. So I have an 11 year old, a nine year old, a seven year old, an almost five year old, an almost three year old, and a newborn baby girl. And um, as of yet, I have taught my 11 year old how to read, my nine year old, and my seven year old is at the very kind of beginning steps of it all. Um, and when I say beginning steps, I mean the time where they can look at um, a book and they can read a sentence by um, sounding everything out. Um, very basic, kind of at the beginning of my idea of beginning. I don't mean letter sound. Okay, so I it is Saturday and my kids are kind of all over. We have game day on Saturday. Some kids are playing computer games or in and out. So I will probably have lots of starting and stopping. But I have my notebook here and I wrote down basically seven points I wanna talk about as to how I go about um, teaching my kids to read in the different stages that we kind of hit each, each mark at and what I do at those stages. Okay, so I had to kind of change my camera a bit because my baby woke up and I'm nursing my baby now. Okay, so the first thing I have written down on this list, so before I start, I wanna say that every child learns to read at a different phase, so I can't really tack an age on any of these because um, I will talk about kind of markers I see um, in the child's development and what they're kind of being able to figure out on their own and then how I introduce things. But I will say that this first step I do from the time when they're very little, like one to two years old, um, they're just kind of picking these things up on their own. We're kind of introducing it within our family, very, you know, in a real natural way. So the first thing is this, now this to some people might be like, what? A DVD, yes, there's a DVD that I always play for my kids and it's called Leapfrog, Leapfrog Letter Factory. And they start watching this when they're little. We just kind of put it on in the car. Um, we play in the house every now and then. Um, it's just kind of something we watch and, um, and it just kind of gets the idea, these songs in their head. So what I love about it so much is that they introduce each letter in like a little room with a special sound and then they sing this song and it's like, the A says ah, uh, the A says ah, uh, every letter makes a sound, the A says ah. Uh. And so each time the child is learning what the letter is, they're associating with like a sound that something does and then there's a song and it's kind of repetition, you know, it's repetitive. So the child's like hearing it over and over again. So that's the first thing that I do from when they're really, really young. And on here I have a uh, leapfrog letter factory. I also have some other things. Um, their letter, families, letters, and so on and so forth. Um, so I also have on here um, sand sticks, alphabots. Okay, so what that means is when I was at, um, what's that place called? A Lakeshore Learning. We used to have a Lakeshore Learning store by us when we were living in Texas. And they had these things called the alphabots and they're like these little, um, letters like an A, B, C, but they're like little, like little robots and you can transform them into the little robot that they are and then transform them back to the letter. They're called alphabots. They also have ones for numbers as well. And so I get those early on as just kind of like a manipulative, a fun thing for them to kind of play with. I have a lot of boys, so they tend to really like things like that. At least my boys do. Um, things that they build, things that they, um, they kind of transform into something else. And so at that kind of earlier stage, two, three, I just have these kind of toys around. My hair is crazy today. Um, and then I also do stuff like really naturally, like if we're outside and they're playing in sand or playing, have like a dirt area, we take a stick and we make letters. I do this, I do this like so randomly, like just um, if we happen to be outside and doing something, it's not staged, I don't buy, specific things for it. We just kind of like, oh, my child has a stick and there's a place he can write in the ground with it. And then we might just kind of go, hey, let's make the letter B and make the sound. Um, a lot of times when they're playing with string, I find that they'll try to take the string about the age of four and start turning it into letters, like to curve it and stuff like that. I've had one child, he's very um, kinesthetic, very tactile learner. He made all the letters um, of the alphabet with his body. He would do it all the time when he was about four. 
Um, so yeah, but the first thing I would say is Leapfrog Letter Factory um, DVD, and I'll go ahead and insert a picture of that here. Okay, so this is the DVD uh, Leapfrog Letter Factory. This is a good one. And then here are the alphabets I spoke about you can get at Lakeshore Learning Center. Okay, and so that's basically number one, just kind of like introducing the letters through the DVD, also just kind of like randomly, you know, writing it maybe in the sand and the dirt with their finger or with the stick. I know that doesn't sound like, oh, that sounds so technical, but that's just kind of what we do. Number two is we talk about our letters naturally in home, church, stores, practical ways to hear, see, and listen. So what I mean by that is there have been all kinds of times where my kids are about, three years old, two or three, and you have to take them to the vestibule during mass, maybe they're fussing, and they would have all of these names on the wall or like different things that they could feel. You know, they were like, um, maybe names of people that had given a great deal of money to the church, or maybe people that had done some really great volunteer work, and, uh, and they have their names kind of, um, put on the wall and they kind of pop out a little bit. So I've taken the kids and I go, oh look, an A or a B or whatever letter, and I touch it, or I'll say, Let's find your letter. Let's say the child's name is Charles or Betty. These are not my children's names, by the way. Which is <laughs> whatever the name is. And have them find that letter if they can identify it, because none they can at this age. Um, or at least let them know what it is and just kind of feel it. We're at the supermarket and maybe there's a big sign and there's a letter A or B or C or Z or whatever. And just to point out that letter and say, oh, look, you know, the letter C or the letter D, you know, and then we sing a little song, the D says duh, the D says duh, things like that. So just really naturally implementing our letters, like to, for letter identification and letter sound into our natural everyday lives. Okay, so now I'm burping the baby. <laughs> okay, so um, number three, so like I said, number one, number two. Now, mo most of the time, this is like for two and three year olds, but sometimes you're gonna have a child who you're gonna have to extend that time period for, sometimes four, five, or even six. There are some children, and there are gonna be people that probably don't agree with me on this, but that's okay, um, that I've had that just needed a bit more time with just really focusing on letter identification and letter sounds and um, being able to really kind of let that be part of their natural lives before they pick up a book and start reading. Um, but anyway, so number three, I kind of, uh, level three, number three, is read aloud. Um, so read aloud with your children, books on tape, um, having them sit next to you while you're reading aloud and follow along, like putting your finger or having like a bookmark, something underneath the line while you're reading. I'm having them follow along yeah. or you read, I read. So you get a book that is very, you know, simple, three letter words um, that are very phonetic. You can, they can sound them out. And then like, I read a sentence and then they read a sentence. My kids just ran by. Um, so this, this stage again also can kind of take time um, depending on your children. Now what I find is about when a child is about four, or five, if they really get, they really can identify their letters. Let's say um, they, they understand the phonetic sound. They're able to kind of grasp the concept of this E at the end is silent. And so that makes the vowel at the other part, you know, like the word tape, the E is silent. So it makes the A say its name. Like they kind of understand some basic things. I find around the age four or five, if they're gonna be really picking up on reading on their own, they start to do something, at least in my family, where they memorize text. So they start to, you read a book to them, they ask you to read it over and over, and then they start to memorize whole books. Um, I have found that my kids that do that kind of naturally when they're about five years old are the kids that are going to just be able to pick up a book and start going um, because they've really had a lot of time of watching you read, identifying words. Now this, like I said, every child is different and every family is different and everyone has different genetics and all that kind of stuff. But in our family, I've just found that that's kind of the case with my kids. Um, the kids that are more like, really like the rules of how it all works and that don't necessarily memorize are really gonna, for, in my family, they just take a little longer because they wanna understand the mechanics behind reading. Um, and so I just wanted to make that little point that sometimes you'll have a child that just like memorizes like a whole bunch of books or they'll sit down and they'll, they'll say, tell me what this sentence is and they'll watch you 
and they'll take their finger and put it under each word. They're not reading, but they're memorizing while they're putting their finger under each word, and that's doing something. They're, they're, it's kind of like almost like sight words, like they're remembering it by sight, they're remembering what they look like, um, and they're just kind of hungry to be reading on their own. So anyway, so this stage with reading aloud, books on tape, following along, you read, I, le I read. Um, I, like I have other things going on um, in other areas, um, but I would say during this period, I love using Seton Phonics books and I love their English, Seton English and Phonics. I find that they break everything down. You could do a page of day of, a page a day of each and, um, and some of it's kind of like busy work, so you could skip it if the child really understands the concept. But during this time, I really like to introduce um, uh, Seton's phonics and English books because I find that it's really helpful because they're listening to a lot of reading. They're hearing a lot of books on tape in our family during this time period. We're doing a lot of like, okay, I'm gonna read out loud. I want you to follow along. And then alongside of that, we're coupling the phonics and the English from Seton. So they're really understanding the mechanics and the why and the how. And um, some kids I've had that are just kind of trying to take off with reading um, really get like, I don't want to learn the mechanics. I am ready. I can totally do it myself. And that's fine, but I still try to introduce some of the workbook to them because I find that they'll get to certain areas and certain places with the English language. It's just so darn tough. And having the mechanics and the why and the how is really gonna help them. So during this phase of reading aloud, just having reading, just be in the home. Now what happens when you have a larger family is if you're doing this, let's say with your oldest, let's say your oldest is like eight or nine and you're in the stage of just doing lots of read alouds and lots of books on tape and the child's picking up reading and um, and you know what, for, for y'all who are like, wait a minute lady, you haven't like taught the how to, so I'm gonna go back a minute, but I just wanna talk about those kids that are picking up reading just really fast. Um, if they're doing that, I would really suggest still doing like finding some pages and let's say you use any kind of English book you use, but for us we use Seton. Um, and we always have, no matter how much I've switched curriculum, I have always used um, Seton phonics and English. Um, I will find a specific page in the Seton workbook that I can tell they need to work on this mechanics, the mechanics or maybe like a section and just kind of work with them. If they just refuse to do the workbook, I will look at the workbook and I will find out how they're teaching this specifically and then I would just bring it into the situation naturally. Um, like the whole thing about the silent E and the A, like in the word tape. I would just kind of naturally work into the conversation with the child. Oh, you know, um, this word, so maybe we've done p ig pig oh great and now they get to a word you know tape and they're like they don't know what to do with this to app eat like they're confused or eh, whatever and they're the kind of child that just doesn't want to do a workbook and you feel like you're just fighting them on it then I would look in the workbook I would see the how to and then how to because it's been a long time if you since you've been to school and if you're teaching a child to read again sometimes it's good to just freshen up or watch YouTube videos on how to teach a concept and then you just bring it to the child like they're gonna feel like it's more natural. Oh, mama's just teaching me something, but you've like prepared yourself for the situation. So, um, so yeah, so I would say, so I just wanted to say that real quick to a child who is really hungry to read, does not want to be read aloud to, um, but really needs some of the mechanics, then I would say, uh, get busy mama, like learning some basic stuff and then sitting down with them, having them read to you out loud. And then when they get to where they don't know, Oh, just you know and you just explain it to them and then a lot of times the kids reading like early on like at five or six and they're wanting to read then if you're just sitting casually oh let me just explain that to you real quick they're not gonna take super like a big like like offense to it like I can do so myself they're gonna be like oh thanks you know like oh thanks you know I got it I got it um, so that's for kind of the early on reader now let's go back and let's say you have a child who has um, can identify their letters and um, and are learning their letter sounds, but you know, it, they still need a little bit of work, and you're reading the, those three letter words, pig, rat, sat, all that kind of stuff, um, then I would say during the phase of this phase now, so you've introduced the letter sounds, I do the DVD, we make it really natural within our home and our conversation, then I start doing lots of read alouds, books on tape, all that kind of stuff, then that's when I would introduce a well, you know, um, a really great <laughs> curriculum that is gonna help them learn to read. What I have found, I've tried them all. I've tried them, we did Hooked on Phonics. Um, we did uh, Learn to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. Y'all, that is really dependent on the child. And once you hit like lesson 
20 or 30 something. I feel like so, I don't know which one it is, but so many kids are like, they're done by that lesson. Um, but that's just in my family. Maybe everyone feels different. I have found the best way for my families to do exactly what I'm talking about, where we introduce the letters um, and the sounds, and then I start with Seton phonics and the English. Because what's happening is as they're learning the phonics and how things are working like phonetically, then they're also learning sentence structure and how things are kind of positioned in the sentence and where they go and then why, the why behind it. And I find that if I do, my phone's gonna die soon. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wrap this up. I find that um, if I do it in that order, they're listening, they're hearing a lot of books on tape, they're working on their phonics, they're understanding sentence structure, they're starting to do the read along with mama. I would say I do like 20 minutes a day, you know, doing some workbooks and then later on in the evening, doing some read aloud um, or maybe have a CD in the car with read alouds. Just make it very natural. Um, I feel like reading is one of the things that are, it's gonna happen for a lot of kids, but some kids are gonna need a little bit more than others. I had a lot of mamas say, oh, they'll learn to read, they'll learn to read. Not all kids just learn. Some kids need more, like I said, of the mechanics and the understanding the why. Um, so anyway, so stage three, the whole reading aloud and all that kind of stuff and introducing the phonics, that can be a long stage for some kids and that's okay. Um, some kids can go, you know, I don't know how long, I'm not like a professional, but I would say like to 10 years old, um, especially with boys, just taking a little bit more time and letting it all kind of sink in. And sometimes a little, a little older than that, but, um, but not all the time. I'm just kind of like saying that. So if you're like, wait a minute, we've been doing this for a while and you know, sometimes it just takes them a little while, but at the same time, like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm just sharing what, what I do. So stage four is letting the child obsess a bit about a subject and nurture that subject. So if you're working on reading with them and they're just it's not quite clicking, or let's say you have a child that it is. Okay, so during this time, it's important because whether they're loving reading or they're not loving it, um, if they find a subject they love, trains, medieval times, um, Minecraft, whatever it is that they're really into, if you kind of, we're very specific. When it comes to like video games and stuff like that, they only do it once a week or they can like watch reviews on that subject or we'll get books on that subject and we'll learn all about it and they can categorize and they can make pictures about the characters and then we have them write the names underneath the characters so they're working on their letters and they're working on their sounds um, within a subject that they're just so into. This is so important. I don't wanna make this video long and my little guy, he's calling somebody. I'm not mama, but anyway, um, this is an important area because then you're letting reading kind of naturally enter into their hearts and their interests. And I just think it's really important. Um, I'm, I used to be really big on child-led learning and everything. I'm not anymore, but I'm very specific. If they have a big interest, we foster that, but we foster that alongside our traditional curriculum. And I have found that they have made huge leaps and bounds like in their educational process by doing it that way within our family. So that's number four. Number five, oh, and number four is you can give them a notebook. We get those little 25 cent notebooks from the store, uh, like this one, <laughs> and I get a lot of them. And I ask them to journal. If you have a kid who's like, I refuse to journal, I just say, do whatever you want in this journal. So a lot of times if a child's really into something like, like I said, like Minecraft, something like computer-based, and as my kids get into toys like Legos, I let them research online and I sit with them and I kind of explain how to go through. And then when they understand, I still stay in the room. Um, and they take their notebooks and they write down all kinds of information about sets. I let them write paragraphs about sets or sentences when they first start out. Um, and just never correct anything in this notebook unless a child asks you to or unless you feel like it's important like there's a word they just keep reusing so you want to correct it now because they're re they're using it a lot um but other than that y'all do not correct anything in the fun journals or the notebooks this is a safe space for them so if they cannot spell something it's okay unless it's like something like i said they're going to use over and over so you want to just go ahead and help them out with that but always do it in a way that's like oh always say like at least a couple of things that are great about they did and then say oh by the way and let them know that one thing you want to let them know um because this needs to be a safe space for them to be able to be creative okay so number five blends funny rules the hard stuff all that mechanical like the mechanics of the english language as they get farther along like the blends and like um homophones and things like that if you're not really into like workbooks at the beginning this is the stage 
I think it's good to introduce that kind of stuff at. And usually I find it's about seven years old where you're introducing the mechanics and the whys and those hard rules that are like, what? Because by seven, you know, almost eight, they're at the age of reason. They can kind of reason through it. They can kind of understand it a little bit better. Um, and I just feel like that's a good time to introduce the mechanics if you haven't done so already. So that's number five. Number six, this is where I introduced and I wrote down just basically Seton phonics or other kind of workbooks, the step-by-step -step of phonics. Now I know I said it early on because I just think it's really important, but if you're someone who's not really into workbooks, um, I would say this is the time though to really stress all that, like I just said, the mechanics. Oh, we have a package. Um, all the mechanics, but specifically a phonics workbook. If you haven't gotten one thus far, this is the time to do it. Um, I would recommend doing it earlier, but if you're like, no, I'm not doing workbooks, I'm not doing any of that kind of like traditional stuff until my child's like eight, then this is the time where I would say it's a good idea to do it. But mama, it's all up to you, you're the mama. I'm just sharing what we do. And then um, the last one, number seven, is reading lists and weekly library visits and bringing it all together. So at this point is when you want to encourage them. You wanna, if you, if you know Vistaprint, it's a company you can have t-shirts made. This is a time where you wanna say like, hey, uh, I'm gonna start a reading book list for you. You can do it on your notebooks on your phone. You can do a list on the refrigerator, sitting under these lights and it's getting hot. And I still have that like discoloring from my pregnancy is starting to go away, but anyway, like had to say something. But yeah, this is the time you wanna do it. So you can do it in your notebook, you can do it anywhere you want, and it's basically going to be like every time they read a book, it doesn't matter what book it is. Sometimes you'll have a child who's like, I refuse to put a book that's easy on this book list, only chapter books. That's okay, that's your child. Or if your child's like, I want everything to count, then put whatever on this list at the earlier stages. But if you're like at eight or nine years old or 10 and they're starting to read chapter books, even if it's like the simple ones, like Ricky Ricotta, I think that's what it's called. Um, um, kind of like, and then also like potato chip books, the kind that like you just want to keep going, like Magic Treehouse books and things like that. They're gonna have the same language throughout, but they're really getting good at finding and identifying words. Like if you start the lists and let's say that, you, let the child determine, like once I read 10 of these chapter books, um, then you can get a shirt made for them. Go on Vistaprint, they get to pick out whatever like little, you know, logo they have on there and you can put your homeschool name on it or you can put like, um, I'm a great reader or whatever the kid wants on the shirt. I would not put the child's name. That's just me. Cause I wouldn't want strangers know my children's names walking down the street. That's just me. Um, and then get that shirt for them and you can find them for good deals. Like sometimes they're, they're as low as $5 with like $3 shipping. Sometimes they're going to be more like 10 or 12. Um, but I, I do that, um, for, um, my kids are coming out from every corner of the house, literally at the same time. But yeah, I would find something that excites them, whether it's, okay, sorry, we keep switching spots, but um, basically just whatever really excites your kids. Here comes a time where there's lots and lots of little like, I don't wanna call them interruptions because those are our kids, right? But um, asking lots of questions. Anyway, so um, basically just whatever excites them. Make a list of how many books, let's say 10, and then when they're done, get them a little something fun. I'm not big on giving rewards for like learning. I feel like learning is just one of those things that, you know, we do. But I do feel like when it's something like this, when you're really encouraging them to like uh, get to that next stage with reading, it's just a good encouragement for them. Um, some kids just want a sticker. Some kids don't need anything big, but some kids need something bigger. So, um, so that's the last thing on my list, but I do want to say weekly library visits are so important. If you're not a library kind of person, or if you're like, I always rack up tons of say, or, um, fines at the library, then I would suggest either getting on a homeschool Facebook group or going to Goodwill, but just bringing in new literature in your home every week. And I know that's why I suggest the library because buying books every week can get expensive. Um, but if you sometimes, um, one thing that'd be kind of fun is if you do like a book swap with somebody or sometimes free cycle will have books or sometimes just getting on Facebook for exchange groups. Um, they have things like that. There's so many ways to get like just new literature in your house or even if you get like something like let's say you find a big old box of books at your library sale every year um and then just don't give them all the books at once but just kind of bring in a couple books at a time that can be so effective just for the kids to have new literature in the house or some people um create a home library we started to do that 
but I found out in like, I don't know, six months, it was not worth it. My kids, it's like as soon as it got on the shelf, they didn't really do it. I do have one area for a home library. It's a lot smaller and I'm very specific about what I put in there and that's been very effective. Um, I have a video about that. I'll link in the description box if you wanna check it out. But anyway, so that's basically it. At the bottom of the thing, I have some practical tips. I have, um, let's see, learning to read, Seton Phonics, yeah, and Leapfrog videos. Oh, also um, Netflix and Prime Video and Hulu have some really great educational um, videos like Word World is really fantastic, especially if they're at that blending phase where everything in this little world is all made out of letters and they blend them constantly and show the kids how they blend together, how they come together to make something new. Um, so just things like that. But anyway, I wanna go ahead and wrap this up so it's not super long. If you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the seven points that I talked about. I will write them in the description box for you so you can have them kind of like as a visual. And yeah, so I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. God bless.